How does a top G, we're talking about team building and partnering, because I noticed how uh, Sterling Cooper is a very outspoken friend of yours. Yeah. So, you know, how does, uh, how does top G, how does, uh, how does, how does one build a team in team building and partnering? What's your bullshit filter? Yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, I have a few criteria I try and stick to. Obviously, people with aligned values. What I try and do personally is I try and it's not so much trying to find people who have certain things, but avoiding certain things. So in my experience, if someone's past a certain age and they're still broke, that, that's a, they, they must have some kind of hidden laziness or some kind of hidden, I don't know, a lot of them will come up with a bunch of excuses. But if you're past a certain age and you, and you really haven't got your life together at all, I avoid those people absolutely. You need wow. people who are at least semi-winning. Because in my experience, the, the person who's going to snake you for food is the starving man, right? That's right. So, so um, I try and only do business with people who have too much money to, to rob me. So uh, a lot of my business deals are on handshake. Because really? I know that I know that we're all in it for, for the greater cause and we're in it for the brotherhood and we're in it to make money. Yeah, sure. But we'd never lose our brothers over a little bit of cash. So that's the first thing. Second thing is obviously networking and trying to find a strong network. That's difficult to do. I have my own network. There are networks online. But I think as the world gets more and more polarizing, you need to find the people who not only are complaining about the problem, but are looking to fix the problem. And I think one of the ways to fixing the problem is becoming, is galvanizing yourself against the enemy. And that requires the degree of finance. I think the most important thing men can be doing today is trying to get as rich as fucking possible. You know, being a person that recruits, trains and develops insurance agents and develops agency owners across the country, I definitely re relate with this because I can't tell you sometimes when we interview somebody and we look on their LinkedIn and we looked on their social media and they got this product they're selling this month and they got this product that they're selling this month, and this product they're selling this month. And they felt this way about somebody and they, they're best friends and that's my homies, that's my road, that's my road dog, right? And next thing you know, six months later, they're dogging them out. They're calling them out for some reason. They're throwing them under the bus. And then they go from one opportunity to another opportunity. And then they have a conversation with me, convincing me that multiple streams of income are a very good thing, especially early in your career before you've even made your money yet. And so those are certain things that I resonate with this because let me tell you this, my biggest area's concern is today's men that are in relationships and having kids and separated two different homes. The kids are in between two different homes and the father has not got his finances squared away yet. But yeah, he's gonna go party. He's gonna go hang out. He's gonna blow his money on on video games and iPhones and all these different things. But yet, he's not providing for his children. Now, you may not get along with baby mama. Fair enough, I get that. But that doesn't mean you skirt your responsibility of providing for your family, especially for the children that you've helped bring into this world. That you let a weekend fling turn into an actual baby, an actual child. But yet, you don't want to provide. I have a massive problem with that. And so when you provide, guess what happens to you? You take care of your responsibilities. You make sure that the people that you birthed and created into this world can look up to you one day and honor you and respect and know that from day one, you've always been there. That's your legacy, that you didn't skip out on your responsibilities. And then you can look at yourself for the rest of your life in the mirror. And if nobody else gives you respect, even if your own children don't give you respect, you don't lose self-respect for yourself. And so when I see flip side, I've seen men who are 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, still broke. I get having a divorce in your family, but yet still broke. And what's worse, it's not the financial condition of their situation. It's the mental condition of older men that in their heart, brain, and spirit, they're broken. I'm too old to start again. I'm too old to recreate myself. I'm too old to start a new business never. Stop with these excuses already. Take care of your finances, take care of your home. A responsibility of a man is to go out there and hunt and to provide and provide protection for his home, for his tribe, for his community, for his city, for his country. It's a man's design. And so when you're looking at men that you are looking to associate with, are they focus on other things or they focus on getting to the next level of your life. I love this feedback from Andrew Dick. Go,